Um, I want to start and uh, jump in. Um, Ms. Ba, you have been spared the scorn uh, and questioning of my colleagues, so I want to jump in with you on some really, uh, what I think are really important issues. Um, I have a, a great concern that we're heading uh, as, a, as a globe spiraling into the greatest food insecurity our planet has ever seen, affecting more people than ever. And obviously, uh, this is a, an issue for uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and so I would like to know uh, from you, uh, what is the largest impact of the Russia's war in Ukraine on the agricultural sector in the country? And what are some thoughts of yours to help to deal with uh, any food insecurity uh, that is going to result? See? Senator, thank you very much for the question. Um, indeed, uh, the impact of the war has made exacerbated food insecurity in Cote d'Ivoire and across Africa. Um, agriculture is one of the most important sectors um, for Cote d'Ivoire. It's one of the largest exporters of cocoa, the largest exporters of cocoa in the world. Um, and so we are looking to continue and to deepen these partnerships in the agricultural sector um, with the U.S. companies that are already active in the country, but also to set um, and to strengthen a business climate to encourage other American companies, um, because when American companies are working in partnership uh, in Cote d'Ivoire uh, and across the region, we see innovation. Um, and so if confirmed, I would be focused on strengthening the role of American companies, the American model, to be able to look at how to not only deal with the immediate crisis of food security, um, but also to be able to create the conditions so that um, small scale farmers, larger farmers, women, young people can have livelihoods in the agricultural sector and to be able to feed themselves and to be able to sustain their lives in the long term. I want to ask you just a, a personal issue. I, I, I worry about our economic relationships often with African nations when we're often sustaining uh, relationships that reflect the colonization of the past. And so when you look at uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, the government's national development plan emphasizes efforts to diversify beyond raw commodity expert, exports, which I think is really important for the development of countries and their strength. Um, they look to promote domestic processing of cocoa beans, or raw cashews into more finished products, which I think is a very healthy economic evolution. How can the U.S. support this initiative in diversifying their agricultural sector uh, while also ensuring that the other priorities, human rights and more, continue to be sustained for the evolution of their, their economy? Thank you for that uh, as well, Senator. Um, economic opportunity is really the foundation of um, security very often. They go hand in hand. Um, and go good governance, transparency, accountability is also part and parcel. So if confirmed, I would be looking at how to have integrated approaches in all that we do. And to really to bring the best of the United States to bear in Cote d'Ivoire, to be able to engage with young people. Because very often, young people, 77% um, of the population of Cote d'Ivoire below the age of 35, they need to be able to see opportunity, and they need to be able to see what's possible. And the American model is different than a colonial model and traditional models. And we have incredible companies. Um, we can help uh, Cote d'Ivoire diversify their economy, looking into other industries as well, like cultural industries. Um, but when we look at American companies encouraging different models um, that can uh, look at corporate social responsibility and to be able to broaden from an integrated perspective economics, good governance, as well as security. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to uh, go quickly to uh, Mr. F uh, Mr. Fick. Uh, we often look at the issues of uh, cyberspace, digital policy, in terms of our fears, concerns, and understandable worries. But I'd like to maybe frame my question in the opportunity side and really ask you that uh, about the April 28th uh, Biden administration's announcement that 61 nations joining with them uh, really for the de declaration of the future of the internet, which really affirms 
uh, the U.S. and other signatories' commitments to an open, free, global, interoperable, reliable, secure Internet that also protects human rights. And I, I guess I'd like to know, how do you envision the CDP's Bureau's role in pursuit of this new global partnership and what aspects of the declaration you're going to be prioritizing? Senator, thank you for uh, taking us from thinking about this issue solely in terms of strategic competition and, and affording an opportunity to talk about the positive, affirmative vision for what technology can do uh, globally. And I, I think the Declaration uh, for the Future of the Internet is exactly that. It is, a, it is an aspirational uh, framework, uh, and it is one that uh, has a lot of power as a, a galvanizing set of principles uh, to help build um, a voluntary coalition of like-minded partners and allies who share our view of an open, free, interoperable, secure digital future. Um, if confirmed, I would use uh, uh, this role to try to expand uh, the number of states who are signatories to the, the, uh, uh, that document um, and do it uh, by telling a, a positive, again, affirmative uh, story of, of the power of technology. Um, and I, I think about my colleagues uh, down the table who, who may be representing the United States um, in parts of the world where for the first time in human history, uh, literally at their fingertips, uh, young people can have all of the world's information available to them. And that is, uh, that's an incredibly powerful transformative force.